Screening for prostate cancer is extremely important. I mean, the analogy I like to use in terms of the impact in society and on families is it's almost identical to screening for breast cancer in women. Right now we're only reaching about 40% of the men that need to be screened for prostate cancer. The reason for trying to really increase that number substantially is that we know that screening with PSA improves the survival from prostate cancer by 25 to 30 percent. So it makes a big difference not just in the individual man's life but also the impact to that man's family, his wife and kids, the household, the impact at a societal level. The advantages of early detection of prostate cancer is you catch it and you treat it before it gets symptomatic. Because if patients present with advanced disease, it's never a good thing. It starts obstructing their, their urinary tract, it spreads to bone and causes a severe pain, spreads to lymph nodes and ultimately takes a patient's life. So early detection and early intervention, non-invasive treatments, are clearly the, the best roadmap. The recommendations for screening for prostate cancer depend a little bit on the history of the man. If a man has a family history of prostate cancer and a first degree relative, so a dad, a son, a brother, or if they have had some genetic testing and tests like BRCA1 or BRCA2, which are some of the genetic tests that correlate strongly with prostate cancer, if those are positive, or if the man is in a high risk group like an African American male or a Caribbean African male, those folks need to start screening probably between the age of 40 and 45, so much sooner. The big upside of combining advanced imaging or radiology with other biomarkers and machine learning is that we're going to get a much more accurate diagnosis and we're going to get that diagnosis a lot sooner and not just in the individual man but also the implications for family members. If you just do the imaging alone, the MRI of the prostate, which is called a multiparametric MRI, has kind of a fancy name, um, we'll still miss about 10 to 15 percent of clinically significant prostate cancers. But if we bring into that also the PSA density, which is the blood test serum PSA divided by the prostate gland volume, which we get from the MRI. And if we also bring in an exosome test on urine together, now we go from missing 15% of clinically significant prostate cancers to, to almost 0%. The trend that I see, you know, in terms of advanced diagnostics is basically helping to facilitate going from population-based medicine where you just would go to an imaging center and get an MRI and get diagnosed with prostate cancer and be treated like the other 200,000 men, 200, men diagnosed with prostate cancer that year to a much more personalized medicine approach and precision medicine approach. So that it's kind of a one-stop shop. Instead of just getting your MRI when you're at the advanced imaging center, now it's an advanced diagnostic center. While you're there, we'll get a sample to do some genetic testing. We'll get some liquid biopsy tests to look for things like circulating tumor cells. We'll, we'll look at the genomics of the tumor itself. We'll get a urine sample to look for exosomes. These are all fancy biomarkers. The bottom line is that allows us to deliver very personalized, individual precision healthcare to that individual, right? And the impact isn't just on the man, it's at a family level. And not just for prostate cancer, because at advanced diagnostic centers, we're using that same model, not just for prostate cancer, but for breast cancer, for dementia in neuro, for cardiovascular disease, so sudden cardiac death and stroke. It's a very, very similar type of a strategy. Well, the roadmap to reach as many men as we can with laser focal therapy and other forms of focal therapy is to educate and empower the patient, first of all, but also the referring doctors so that they know that there is this very important option between whole gland therapy, where the whole prostate gland is treated and doing nothing, that actually makes great sense. That we get equivalent cancer control, but without the side effects. And so through educational endeavors, outreach, through societal meetings, through publications and presentations, we need to do the hard work of getting that education and that message to the patient and to the referring doctors. So the things that are most exciting to me about the advancements with AI and the diagnosis of prostate cancer are that we are just fundamentally reaching 
many, many more men with their correct diagnosis and with early treatment that's less invasive and preserves their quality of life. And it's being done not just by bringing these other biomarkers together with the advanced imaging, but also by using artificial intelligence and machine learning tools, so technology, to not replace the physicians or get in the way of the doctor-patient relationship because we want to preserve you know, the humanity of that, but to get behind the physicians and help them do a better job diagnosing and treating their men.